Alright, so just because you make multiple video games does not necessarily mean we need to make multiple movies. That's right, the most recent Resident Evil movie, um, I decided I had to watch this to remember what happened in order to watch the next one, but in reality, I guess that doesn't really matter. Alright, so I've never actually played the video game. But I do remember watching the first one and I did not feel in any way, shape, or form that I was watching a video game. This one, however, I really felt like I was watching someone play a video game. And we all know how fun that can be. So, straight from the beginning, this story is just continuing again. This is the fourth installment, I think, of Resident Evil. Now we're just seeing the story bleed itself out and there's nothing positive is going to happen at this point. The little foot disease is actually kicking in. Now if you're going to look at me for story on this one, I'll try and give you something, but basically uh, the story continues from our last one, which is the same as the one before that, and very different actually from the one before that. We have our same main character uh, who's fighting off some more than just zombie characters. Uh, that it was zombies in the beginning and it just kind of morphs itself into just weird stuff after that and this one really takes the cream of the crop for weird stuff happening and like I said I really felt like I was watching someone play a video game reason being there's a boss scene in this movie um, and it's in the trailer so you see pieces of it in the trailer but the ending conclusion is like a video game from back in the 80s early 90s when you know epic conclusions did not exist, which is a fail because this was not made in the 80s and early 90s. So like I said, we have zombies and some other weird beast creatures in this movie, so normally you would classify it as a horror. Now this one's taking the cake as more of an action, and yeah, nothing scary whatsoever, so dropping the horror altogether in this movie. Now, in comparison to the very beginning, we actually had a horror movie, now we just we just gave up altogether on this. Little foot disease kicks in and you just try to milk this for everything it's worth and at this point it's worth nothing. If you couldn't wow me for a trilogy then chances are you're not gonna keep trying and get it right eventually it's just you're gonna keep trying and ruining it over and over again. Alright so I'll go off on actors or really actresses. We have Mia Jokovic and Ali Larger who reprises her role from the last movie and I think the one before that. Now they're playing the exact same characters they were before, not much has changed, their character dynamic hasn't changed, nothing about them, except Mia Jokovic is no longer, if I can say, Superwoman. Come to the mini-boss scene with this big giant zombie, she doesn't have her powers, but by the end of the movie she's starting to be really cool and have powers again, for no explanation, but, you know, Adelaar doesn't actually add too much to the movie. I thought maybe they might do something with the character. I can't be harsh on the actresses because it's really not their fault, so I, I gotta push it aside. It's the writing and the directing and the producing and the why the heck did you bother doing another movie. So this one adds 3D to it. Useless. Yes. Moving on. Alright. The best part about this movie, the only good part about this movie, Wentworth Miller, is when you see him, he's in a prison because we know him from Prison Break and he reprises a prison break role for the first 30 seconds you see him and it's kind of hilarious and that's the most fun I had in the entire movie. Writing time. If Tack were here he would definitely give this a lot better rating than I'm going to but he's not here. I'm sure he'll say his piece eventually. I'm gonna give this one a 1 out of 5 sequel apocalypses on the next review.